Hello, I just wanted to do a quick tutorial today on baking ambient occlusion maps onto objects in their own UV space, um, which is a little bit different than maybe um, doing ambient occlusion for a render or something. This would be more for games or for using ambient occlusion in a texture, which can be very beneficial to add depth to a texture that you're creating or dirt in corners, uh, grime, uh, things like that. So I have a pretty basic scene here mostly standard primitives just because I know these are already going to be UV'd and it saved me a little bit of trouble. Uh, to do this, uh, it's pretty easy actually. We're just going to go under Maya in the hypershade and you'll see a little black circle here called surface shader. We're going to click that. That's going to drop our surface shader into our work area. We want to apply this now to all of our objects in the scene. Once it's applied, everything will go black, which is annoying, but also part of the process. Um, now, to actually apply ambient occlusion to this node, we just want to go under the mental ray option. You'll see textures. We're going to select textures. And you can use any of the mental ray ambient occlusion nodes. I'm just going to use the default AMB occlusion node by pressing that. That will drop it into our work area also. So now we have these two nodes here. I'm going to middle drag from this node to this one using the middle uh, mouse and select default. Looks like nothing has happened and visually in your viewport nothing will have happened at this point. But if you render, um, and really quick let's have a look at our render settings. Just make sure by default you might not be on Mental Ray, you might be on Maya Software or Maya Hardware. Make sure you're on Mental Ray and you can adjust your quality setting and your render size here under Common. I'm going to make my quality setting under the quality tab, production. I think by default it's a draft probably. Um, so we're going to go production, close that, and do a quick render. Now this render is going to show us what this ambient occlusion will look like once we bake it out. We're not actually doing this for any purposes of having a render. Um, so right now it's obviously, it looks fine, we have ambient occlusion, but it's very kind of dirty and blotchy and we don't like that. So we're going to adjust that by adjusting the ambient occlusion node. If you open the ambient occlusion node, you'll notice your samples by default are 16. Let's make that 128 really quick, just so we can, um, just so I can show you an example of a better quality render. I'll probably render it a lower one once we're done, just to speed up the process, but here's our render now at 128 samples. Obviously much higher, you can tell already. The graininess is going away. I usually do like 512 or something if I'm doing something, or 1024. If I really know something needs to be tight and maybe it's going to be on a 4K map, you will have to wait a bit of time for those renders, but that's okay. So let's close this now. And just a reminder, we only are rendering so that we can see this um, as a preview. There's no other function for this render. We're not using this for anything. Now if I actually want to bake these out, and I'll show you something really neat. This is going to bake out the texture for each one of these objects individually and apply it on its own node, or on its own shader node rather, uh, and it will display in the viewport, which is great. So you don't have to do this object, and then this object, and then this object, and this object. Okay, so you can do it all at once. So we're going to select everybody in the scene. If you've been modeling, you might be under the Polygon tab. We want to move to Rendering. And then under Lighting, Shading, Batch Bake Mental Ray, and we're going to open this up. Now by default, this is what it's going to look like. We're just going to change a few things. Objects to Bake, make sure it says Selected, or All, if you know you want to bake everything in your scene. We want to turn on Bake Shadows. And we want to turn on Use Bake Set Override. Now turning on Use Bake Set Override is just going to give you a couple options. Your color mode. Um, you can do only light, only occlusion. We're going to use light and color. And this will be your size of your texture you want to use. You can make this 1024, 4K, whatever you want. We're going to make it 256 just to make it easy. And really quick, let's adjust this shader node back so we can do something a little quicker for you guys so we don't have to wait. So my shader node is back to 64 samples. My texture size, obviously this is very, very small. We're going to make it 256. And we are going to select all these objects and now convert and close. It's very important to make sure you set your pro either set your project in Maya before you do this or know where Maya's default project is set to. 
Uh, if you don't know that, then these textures will get built, but you're not going to know where it's saved to. So you're going to have to go track those down. Uh, and we'll go over that really quick in a second. But So here's our scene. Looks really good. Turn our wireframe off. Not too bad. This is really, really helpful um, when texturing. Even for just basic character work, it helps outline uh, certain areas of the face and stuff like that. Now we're getting a lot of blotchiness, and that is strictly just because of the size of the textures I'm using and the sample size is incredibly low. This would be perfectly ice smooth uh, if we were using higher numbers. Now I was talking about our project earlier. You can set your project here, File, Project, and you can say New or Edit Current, and that will tell you where it's saving to. And let's just look at this really quick. Here's why this is nice. Each one of these is its own custom shader now with its own texture. And here's a shot of one of our textures. There you go. And you might want to use this in Photoshop as an overlay or something. And that's it. There you go. Baking ambient occlusion in Maya. Very helpful. Hope it helps everyone. Thanks.